Begin self-publishing episode number 59. All for income. How many books do you need to sell to make money? Interested in self-publishing but don't know where to start? Want to get your book onto Amazon? Want to hold your paperback book in your hands? Learn how on the Begin Self-Publishing podcast with your host, Tim Lewis. been a while since I've done a solo show and I'd like to say that this was a planned idea that I had to do a solo show interspersed between the interviews but with the great tradition of these things it's more the case that I've actually had a gap where interviews that I'd hoped would be arranged haven't been arranged however it gives me a chance to complete and do a show on something that I started doing a while ago You may recall that I did an interview not long ago with Emmanuel Nataf, where I talked about a blog post that they wrote on the Reedsy blog, talking about how much was the average cost of self-publishing. Now this got me thinking about trying to create a little spreadsheet to actually work out how many books it would take to sell to actually cover the costs that the Reedsy average figures represented. So I started off with a little, fairly simple spreadsheet. Like with all of these things, got a little bit out of hand. Things are more complicated than you'd think, even when you look at just ebook in- income. I'm going to focus on primarily ebook income and the US and to some extent the UK ebook stores and how many ebooks you need to sell at particular prices to make the money needed to cover both the costs of creating the ebook and to some extent more significantly how much in terms of ebooks you would need to sell to make an income equivalent to both the minimum wage and to the average US income from writing a book. Now this is all very much a theoretical exercise and that's always the case when you're doing any kind of estimation or guesswork. There are lots of factors that affect things. Even just doing ebooks is a lot harder than you think because a 70% royalty level ebook won't actually give the author 70% of the royalties on the Kindle store. This is because on the 70% band between $2.99 and $9.99, there is a, a delivery charge that is taken out of the costs, depending on how big the ebook file is. In the UK market, there's also VAT, which is value-added tax, which is like a sales tax, which is also taken out of the amount of royalties. Which is why I've also done the same figures I've done for the US as for the UK store, to show the difference in earnings because of the VAT charge. Now, I can understand those of you listening who are more interested in this will probably want to go to the website for Begin Self-Publishing and go to beginselfpublishing.com slash all for income where I have the show notes to this episode. There I'm going to lay out all of the actual figures that I'm going to talk about anecdotally in this episode. So I don't need to worry about trying to write things down. Just go to beginselfpublishing.com slash all for income and have a look at the actual tables of figures that I produced. I made various assumptions in my mathematical modelling of this amount. I've assumed that the book will have both developmental and copy editing and a typically priced cover on Readsy. When I say typically, it's the median $630 price cover. And I know that an awful lot of books don't have developmental editing. But I think as a general trying to go on the overestimate of the cost side. I think it's worth including developmental or structural editing in the cost. I've also assumed that they'll spend about $1,000 on marketing and various other unspecified costs of the book. This is another one of these how long is a piece of string questions. I don't think spending $1,000 on marketing is particularly low or particularly high. So I would say, in my opinion, it's probably around the sort of figure that people would spend on marketing an ebook. 
I also say, assuming that it takes somebody 100 days to write the book, working with an editor and also marketing the book, spending about 7.5 hours a day. Now, obviously, this figure varies dramatically. Some people can write and create a book within a month, and other people will take years and years to write a book. So there's 7,500 hours is the figure that I've picked out of the sky from my estimates. I'm also just looking at ebooks. I'm looking at ebooks, A, because they're easier to work out than paperback books, and also because they're considerably more lucrative. Paperback books, you're generally talking about a dollar or two a book, or of an ebook that's priced about $9.99, you're talking about six or seven dollars worth of income coming in from that book. To begin with, I my first example, I'm going to assume that it's just the only source of income for authors is the US Amazon ebook store. I also assume that they're getting no income from KDP Select or any other rental schemes. So again, this is a, an underestimate in terms of the amount of income that people will get in. I've also taken a US minimum wage figure of about $7.50 an hour and an average wage of $25 an hour. I'm getting both of these from this great source known as Google. Again, this is, these are arbitrary figures. So, it's like with anything, you have to say, well, this is an estimate. I've also assumed a 2 megabyte ebook file. My experience is it's about the size of a 40 to 80,000 word book that doesn't have any massive illustrations or pictures in it. In terms of the actual figures, I'm not sure the size of the book makes that much difference. If you're doing a massive ebook with huge amount of color intricate pictures in it, then your delivery charges will go up quite considerably. Almost to the point where it may make sense to actually have go for the 35% royalty option where you don't pay delivery charges. So I created a little spreadsheet and I went and entered all these details in and I came up with a range of figures. Rather than just sitting here and reading out the uh, charts that I've included in the Begin self for Income page, I'll just go through some of the uh, headline figures. To make enough ebook sales to cover the costs of a typical 40,000 word ebook, at 99 cents, you need almost 10,000 copies to be sold. If you go to $2.99, about 1,900 copies need to be sold. If you go up to $9.99, you're going down to about 500 copies that you need to sell to cover your costs. So you can see there's a considerable amount of difference between 99 cents and 9.99. In terms of the minimum wage levels, that is to earn enough money from your books to cover you being paid the minimum wage for the amount of time that you worked on that book, so those 7,500 hours. For 99 cents, for a 40,000 word book, you would need to sell almost 20,000 copies to make back the amount of money to pay yourself minimum wage for the time you worked on, those, on the book. For a 9.99 book, you're talking about only only about 4,200 copies. Obviously, for 80,000 word books, these figures are slightly higher. So for 9.99, you're talking almost 6,000 copies that you need to sell to make a minimum wage for an 80,000 word book that you wrote. My final figure is for the average wage level. So this is to basically earn back an amount of money from your books to pay for all the time, all those 100 days that you spent on the book to be paid at the US average wage of $25 an hour. If we take the 60,000 word book level to uh, just pick a different metric to look at. If you just want to make money to pay back for your costs plus the average wage level for uh, a book that's available for 99 cents, then you're talking about trying to basically sell 58,000 copies of that book if you're selling it for 99 cents. 
If you're selling it for nine dollars ninety nine, and you're talking about seven thousand copies of the book that you need to sell. If we go to the two ninety nine price point, and you're talking about fifteen thousand copies of the book that you need to sell. So you can see there's a considerable difference in terms of price. The biggest drop is between ninety nine cents and two ninety nine. From looking at these the table of figures that they show at begin self publishing dot com all for income. The biggest lessons are that selling books at 99 cents is not a way to make money. While it's great for promotions, you shouldn't really consider that you're going to make a fortune out of selling books this cheaply. Once you get to the 299 level, it makes a big difference in terms of the amount of books you need to sell to break even. If you can work out some way to actually sell books at 9.99, then it's consider it's going to take you a lot of lot less sales to actually make enough money to pay yourself the average wage level. However, you do need to bear in mind that for an awful lot of genres and types of books, you'll be totally uncompetitive at 9 99 For example, I wouldn't try and sell a 40,000 word romance novel 9 99 It just won't sell. However, if you're selling something like a non-fiction book, and a 40,000 word non-fiction book, becomes quite sellable at 9.99 and if you can sell like your 600 copies or so then you'll make your costs back fairly quickly i've also got created a table where i make a an effort to look at the costs if we did the same for the uk market so this is assuming that for some reason you can't say, sell any books outside the uk what i took was the readsy costs and converted them into pounds using the uh, rate of $1.32 for each pound. And I also took the uh, average incomes from the US and converted them across. You could argue that I probably should have taken the UK figures and moved them, but, but I think these are reasonable ballpark figures. Now the price points are obviously different for the UK. The 99 cents price point becomes 99 pence. And the actual 70% threshold is 199 in the UK. Interestingly, the actual end of the 70% threshold is at 9.99 British pounds, which is almost equivalent to $13. If we look at the 99p price point, you're going to need to sell 14,000 books to get to a break even point. To get to minimum wage level, you're talking about about 26,000 sales, and to get to average wage level, you need to be selling about 80 2,000 sales. If we look at the £1.99 threshold, you see that you need to sell about 3,000 books to actually break even, 7,000 to make a minimum wage, and about 17,000 to get to an average wage level. While this is considerably better than the 80,000, it's still quite a lot of books to have to sell at one ninety nine. What's interesting, however, is that because of the higher £9.99 limit for the 70% royalties, the actual break-even sales level is around 500 books. The minimum wage level is about 4,000, and the actual average wage level goes to about 6,000, which is considerably lower than the US totals. So there actually is potential in terms of if your income is mainly from the UK, even with the higher chunk that comes out because of VAT, if you can price your book at nine ninety nine in terms of pound, then the actual number of books you need to sell is lower than the nine ninety nine dollar range because of the difference in the currency amounts. This presumably was true even when the pound was much higher than it is at the moment. Just something to bear in mind if you have a choice of whether you're trying to make your money from the UK or the US. For most prices below $9.99, it makes sense to focus on the US market because you'll get more revenue per ebook. But for the $9.99 threshold, you'll actually get more revenue in the UK book market. So what have I learnt from this exercise? We well, could say that a lot of my figures are arbitrary, and that actually people don't spend 100 days on a book. This is a very val- valid argument. The other thing to bear in mind is that you will get book sales from older books as well as your latest book. 
So it's not the case that you'll suddenly get six months of book sales and then it will suddenly stop. For any even vaguely successful book, you'll still get the odd sales of old books here and there consistently going on, especially if they're in a series. But I think these kind of thought experiment exercises do have value. You can see that actually price does make a big difference in terms of the amount of books you need to sell to make your money back. Also, if you can improve your productivity so that you reduce the amount of time it takes you to create each book, then that's going to boost the amount of income you actually earn once you take your own labour into account. It's very easy to take the break-even figure and think, well, I've sold 500 copies of my book now. I made money. Not realising how much time you spent on the book that you could, if you were working in a full-time job, actually be paid for. You are, in effect, running a mini-business with every single book that you do. So pricing is important. Keeping the costs down also helps to keep up that break-even point. But on the other hand, if by getting a much better cover or much better editing, you manage to increase the actual sales and retention of people reading your books who then read another book that you create, then often this can be more profitable in the long run than just creating the very cheapest book and trying to sell it at 9 99 in the UK market. I don't think for most writers these some level of these figures is impossible. Certainly, if you sell your book for a competitive price, say $2.99 or $3.99, then a couple of thousand sales levels for the lifetime of the book aren't unachievable at all. And if you can see it, consider that your book could be going for years and years and years, then these actual break-even figures are very easy to achieve. However, getting to the point where you can start making a minimum wage or average wage levels takes quite a bit more work, certainly if you're writing lower price books. So I think that there is generally a case in these figures for the fact that it can make a lot of sense economically to self-publish. But it's not going to be some magical money-making machine that's going to produce you vast amounts of money. It can produce people a very good supplementary or even major income. But you've really got to work on reducing the time you spend on it and making sure you can price everything competitively to try and ensure that you get to the right level. Anyway, if you're interested in the actual seeing the complete table of figures that I've produced, then go to beginselfpublishing.com slash authorincome and you'll see the show notes for this article. Talk to you guys next week. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please stop by iTunes and rate and leave a review. This helps make the show more visible. For free resources, show notes, and other helpful content, join the community at beginselfpublishing.com.